What if Naruto was Madara and Hashirama's grandson part 9? Let's go. Orochimaru's grin was like none other. She hadn't grinned like that in a long time. She had a battle sensation. His shinobi instincts were activated for the first time in a while, and he was excited to fight. Orochimaru stood up from the dent that he made, falling on the ground, being hit by Naruto. But then seeing this, Naruto actually started smiling too. He has a worthy opponent. This could become an interesting fight. Though before he actually goes in for an actual fight, he just looks around real quick to notice that his two teammates are almost done with their fight, so he can finish what he now started and continue his interesting fight. So he doesn't have to worry about his teammates. Let's do this! Naruto yelled, tightening his headband, and now going into battle. Naruto dashed forward to Orochimaru once more, trying to punch him in the stomach. And whilst the punch did land, Orochimaru doesn't go flying. She kind of blocks it, but at the same time, it hits pretty hard. Orochimaru tries to backhand kick Naruto in the neck, though he dodges it and pushes Orochimaru's feet with his leg, making him fall temporarily before he can catch himself. But Naruto uses a Mangekyo Sharingan ability, one that he has in the story which is Amaterasu. Yes guys, he does have it. It starts burning away at Orochimaru's body, but after a few seconds of crawling on the floor, Orochimaru is able to make a copy of himself that crawls out of his own mouth. Very disgusting in my opinion, but hey, it is what it is. He is a snake after all. Naruto saw that Orochimaru actually planned for this and was about to use a technique that immobilized Naruto's legs as Orochimaru was mere centimeters away from Naruto's foot, so he could easily attack it. Naruto noticed this just in time as he activated his Rinnegan, pushing Orochimaru back completely. Multiple meters, multiple feet times three, if you're American, throwing Orochimaru at a tree with his back aching and blood oozing out of his mouth. Orochimaru really isn't sure what to do at this point, as he calls for backup for Kabuto and the sound team for anything at this point is useful. He's not completely dead per se yet, but he isn't exactly sure what to do and how to win this fight. The normal techniques aren't working, and Naruto is very smart and just incredibly powerful. His speed is unmatched by anyone. And even Orochimaru's variety in jutsus aren't coming close to doing anything to Naruto. His mere dojutsu are enough to hold him off, and Naruto's chakra aura keeps increasing and increasing, and the area around them keeps morphing along with it. The floor gets warmer and warmer, some parts, especially that where Naruto steps on the ground, turn into red rocks, then liquefy to some extent. And when he stands on them for more than a few seconds, they turn into actual lava. This is the magma release Naruto achieved from the Four Tails. The forced area is being manipulated by his wood style, which he got from Hashirama and perfected along with the Tailed Beast, but isn't any Keke Genkai from the Tailed Beasts. Now he's using a much weaker version of Kurama's Chakra Cloak, as he's using a mixture of all tail beasts, Chakra Cloak basically, and is not just using Kuramas, but he's using his influence, if you want to call it that. He's using wind of Kokuo, completely changing the air around him, using flame release from Matatabi the two tails, which makes everything he touches with his hands turn into blue flames, and if it's anything even remotely flammable, It'll be vaporized by the sheer heat of the blue flames, as they're much, much hotter than any other flame. Now back to the fight, where Naruto is waiting for Orochimaru to approach him one last time, as he thinks that he already won the fight, which to some extent he did. But it was at this point that Kabuto arrived, along with the three sound Genin. The Genin aren't that important, though Kabuto could potentially do something. First, he tries to heal Orochimaru, which Naruto lets happen, 
as he wants an even fight. He has no will to defeat an injured opponent, so he's waiting for Jumara to be healed, and Kabuto appreciates this, nodding to Naruto, though at the same time being terrified, his knees clattering, shaking, and him barely even able to do jutsu properly due to the sheer emotions that are rushing through him. He's scared, he's afraid, he's stressed that something might happen to him, and he feels like he's being killed by a thousand shinobi due to Naruto's bloodlust and killer intent. Now, Naruto is being felt throughout the entire village, as all the trained shinobi are getting a weird sensation in their bodies, and the experienced ones feel like they're back on the battlefield of the third shinobi war. The third Okage doesn't know how to feel about this, as he hadn't been in an actual battlefield for quite a while, he is pretty old after all, but all the Joni that we know and love, Might Guy, Kakashi, Kurenai, Asuma, and so on, well, they feel like they're about to get sneak attacked and have to resist and fight, though no one's actually even close. By the way, yes, they're still in the scrolls of their Genin teams, to open the scroll once their Genin teams get to the tower of the second exam, if that makes sense. But they can still feel the outside world, as anyone, even nearby, even a little bit outside Konoha can feel Naruto. He's just on a whole different level. And his output, the amount of chakra and other things, such as killing intent as well, that he's outputting is on that level of a tail beast, if not even higher than that. The Anbu are on high alert, all the shinobi are ready for the fight of their lives, and to have the Nine Tails attack, the Knight of the Nine Tails attack happen once again, this time perhaps even worse, and everybody's completely on edge, though the Hokage tries to control the situation. He dispatches all four of the Anbu teams that are currently prepared, and sends them near the source of this chakra output, which is somewhere in the battle, somewhere in the forest of death. They don't exactly know where, as there's just so much chakra, it's hard to identify exactly where Naruto is, or rather where this person or thing is, but they just know where about it's at, so they make their way to go there. Meanwhile, now Urchimaru has finished being healed, and he tells Kabuto that there's no use in fighting, that they have to retreat somehow. However, he doesn't say this out loud, so he tells us three Genin, the three sound Genin, to go and attack Naruto. They seem scared at first, but then one of them dashes towards Naruto, trying to use his hand to outmaneuver Naruto and try to break his limbs. That might get him a reward from Orochimaru. Perhaps he could become a higher rank in his army and get to more power and control, though that dream was shortly lived as Naruto, with one quick flick of the finger, crushed this man's dreams, sent him flying into a tree, and knocked him out, almost killing him, but he held back. The other two Genin are now angry, and start going at Naruto too, though this time he doesn't even attack at all, not even a single finger is needed, as he dodges them, making them hate each other, which renders them completely useless in a fight for now, and they won't get up for a few minutes. Kabuto is standing as the last line of defense before Orochimaru as he still needs to recover somehow. He hasn't recovered any of his chakra yet, and his physical wounds are barely healed at all. As Kabuto didn't have a long time and he was under severe stress. Naruto pulls Kabuto closer, as at the same time he pushes him away. Though precisely talking, he's pushing Kabuto's arms and legs away making him unable to hit Naruto, though at the same time pulling his body, his core, his heart, his chest towards him, meaning that Naruto is in full control, in more control of Kabuto's body than Kabuto is himself. And for a few seconds, Naruto lets Kabuto hover beside him, staring at Orochimaru, Orochimaru staring back, not knowing what the hell he's going to do now to get out of this predicament. Naruto's teammates are finally done with their battle, with each of the reanimation of one of the Okage, as they look up at Naruto, who is fighting at a little bit of a higher ground, and they see what they think of as 
a god. It's unthinkable. Naruto is not a Jonin or an Anbu or a Kage anymore. Naruto is straight up a god. They imagined that this is what the Sage of Six Paths was once like, and now Naruto is here, doing the same thing, and then fighting Orochimaru, Asani, one of the strongest people in the entire world, known across all ninja villages as a rogue shinobi. However, deep down, even though yes, they might be very powerful, perhaps even a Jonin level of strength, they can't compete with that fight. They can't do anything. Fighting along Naruto in this kind of battle? That's... That's more than just a dream. That's a wish. Wishful thinking that would never come true. Even in a Genjutsu. That's not even a wish. It's just not that unrealistic. Urchimaru, with his last bit of strength, tried to attack Naruto, though that failed miserably. Naruto, with a single hand, blocked all of Urchimaru's attacks and kicked him in the stomach so hard he went flying once more for not counting probably like the fifth time in this battle. As Orochimaru gets hurt more and more, Kabuto can't do anything else as Naruto is tightening the grip on his Renegon on Kabuto as he feels his bones being crushed, his ribs being pressed against each other as Kabuto faints due to too much pressure on his brain and vital organs. Now, Naruto slowly but surely walks over to Orochimaru and with one final kick to the side of the head, completely knocks Orochimaru out in one battle as a 12 year old, defeating Orochimaru like none other could, displaying power even unrivaled by a Hokage. Naruto now slowly but surely depowering as his mind is still in a battle-like state, his body is slowly getting used to becoming normal once again and suppressing his chakra, turning off his dojutsu and just becoming normal again. He drags Orochimaru by the collar, leaves the forest of death where he is met by 12 Anbu, which even though Naruto is now about 10 times weaker and more suppressed than he was in his fight, are still shocked by Naruto. Even now, he's displaying an unrivaled amount of chakra by any prodigy, and he's only 12. Not sure what to do, they just follow Naruto's lead as he was going to the Hokage's office anyways, dropping off Orochimaru for them to deal with him. Naruto once more puts on chakra cuffs that he made, this time not just with fire element, or a different one, but with every single element to his disposal, even the tail beast's element such as magma style, blue flame release, and more. This is an unbreakable chakra cuff that no one, even a trickster or Shimaru, can escape. And once he gets to the Hokage's office, Naruto makes sure to tell them that. And then he leaves, says goodbye and without revealing too much information about their fight, goes back to the second round of the tuning exams where he was actually participating in as a normal genin. Now Naruto meets up with his two genin again, and conveniently there is the scroll that the sound ninja had, so he takes their scroll as now they can make their way to the tower in the middle of the forest of death. There, they are told that they still have three days to rest, until the next exam, or the next phase of the exams, shall begin. That's gonna be it for today's video, hope you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one, peace!